For today's video, I did some gaming on this little MacBook here, and it was actually the first time I've ever gamed on a MacBook, and yeah, it was it was quite the experience. I can't click on apply. is the first ever MacBook Pro on the channel and uh, just having it in the office makes me feel like I need to start drinking pumpkin frappuccino lattes or whatever. <sighs> I'm sorry, MacBook. I'm just lashing out at you because I'm intimidated by you. Oh, that was quite disappointing. I was expecting the whole thing to just unravel with that one little tug. That does not smell like a new electronic device. I think Apple puts like a scent in these boxes. It smells quite nice. It's very like neutral, clean smelling. Wow, that's thin, but has a nice reassuring weight to it. And then in here it says designed by Apple in California, which I find is a little bit of a weird thing to brag about. But anyway, let's see what kind of documentation we get in here. You get some gray MacBook stickers so that you can flex that you have a MacBook even if you don't have it on you. And then we have our white charge cable with our charge brick. Ooh, that, that was what I was expecting the laptop packaging to do. That is very satisfying, I like that a lot. And then we have our little brick, which I touched half a time and it's already gross. So that is the problem with having stuff all white like this, is if you have even a little bit of finger cheese on your hands, it's gonna transfer. And then this is the 67 watt one, which is a weirdly specific wattage. And then other than that, that's, that's it. That's all we get with it. Okay, let's have a closer look at the MacBook. Now the little MacBook in question is the M2 13 inch MacBook Pro, which the internet seems to think is one of the dumber Apple products at the moment, which <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the $600 luggage tag begs to differ. But anyway, uh, I didn't pay for this little MacBook. It was actually sent over by Micro Center, who apparently also stocks Apple stuff. Micro Center really does have an awesome selection of electronics. And thank you again for sending over this MacBook. Now I was immediately impressed by the build quality of the neutral clean smelling MacBook. But I had a couple of concerns. Wait a minute, so you're telling me you have to use half of its I.O. to charge the thing? You can't touch a button on it without the thing turning on. I just want to demonstrate the keyboard without switching you on. Turn off. Come. Off. No. Ooh. There we have our fully unsheathed MacBook Pro. That is such a nice looking little laptop. But you know, the problem with the nice lookingness of it is I don't really want to touch it with my gross man hands because I know it'll just immediately ruin it. Actually, on the note of immediately ruining it, let's try and open it up and have a look inside. And after taking a while to figure out that MacBooks use pentalope screws, I ran into a bit of a roadblock. Six screws and then do we just lift it off? Oh, I actually have an idea. I'm gonna use this thing. Does it work? Oh yeah, that... Please tell me that was the tool that cracked and not the laptop. Okay, so I just looked at the iFixit video and you do need to use this little thing. You kind of pop it on there and then use one of these bad boys in, in here. Oh. Oh, iFixit, you are very smart. But despite iFixit's genius, it still felt rough. This really feels like I'm taking a knife to a baby seal's face. Ah, uh, please just come off. There we go. Yay. But there was one thing left for me to discover, the hinge. There's something here keeping it down. You should be able to, there, oh. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Very nice. Wow, it's open. Oh, it doesn't look like I damaged anything. 
Ooh, on first impression, those are some sexy laptop insides. Although, there's not much of a cooling solution here, uh, but it makes sense considering that the M2 chip in here can actually run passively like it does in the MacBook Air. So this may actually be an overkill cooling solution for it, which is very promising in terms of thermals and noise while gaming. Other than that though, the RAM and the SSD are soldered down, which really sucks, especially considering that this only comes with 8 gigs of RAM and you can't upgrade after the fact. In fact, the only way you can do anything about the storage and memory in here is by letting Apple bend you over a table when you're actually ordering the device. So upgradability is just not a thing on this laptop at all, which, you know, it's an, it's an Apple device, obviously, but it, it's still really disappointing to see. Uh, anyway, with that, let's try gaming on the thing. Okay, there goes half our ports. Nice. Hello. Ooh, that is a pretty laptop. As I was setting up the little MacBook, I was really flexing my Apple knowledge. Let's go up here and get some more about this Mac information. It's about as far as my navigating Mac OS knowledge goes. The news app has the same icon as Dota for some reason. That's really weird. The keyboard of the little MacBook is fine. It does feel like it has more key travel than it looks like there's space for, so I guess that's impressive. Uh, in terms of the trackpad, I like the size of it, although even on the firmest settings, I feel like it registers clicks too easily and doesn't give you enough haptic feedback, which means it's easy to accidentally click when you don't mean to. The aggressive lack of ports on the little dongle book is definitely an issue, which means the little Acasis USB hub from the last video already saves the day. Oh, wait, I was supposed to be talking about gaming. Well, while I was struggling to install Steam on the MacBook, I decided to have a quick look at the Apple App Store's game selection, which, aside from a whole bunch of phone games, was barren. Wow, you know a game selection's bad when the only two games in there that get you excited are more than 10 years old. Oh wait, there's Disco Elysium. Uh, that's cool. Oh, we also have Psychonauts 2. Apple, you spoil us. And once Steam was installed, it didn't get a whole lot better. Even most of the games without that little circle of death next to them don't seem to work. And despite Steam constantly trying to convince me to just use a PC instead, I eventually found some games that worked. Kind of. CSGO has launched, but it's defaulted into windowed mode. That shouldn't be much of a problem, right? I can't click on apply! I can't apply the settings because I can't figure out how to resize the window so that I can get to the button to click on it. There is no way that's gonna work, but let's give it a try. Holy crap, it's actually worked, what? And after that stroke of luck, first impressions were good. That is the whole thing, right? We're, we're loading into a game, and this laptop doesn't sound like a jet engine about to explode from the exertion of it like every gaming laptop. That is very promising. But my excitement evaporated pretty quickly. Keyboard, no, how do I... I don't want emojis. Why does that bring emojis up? Okay, that is not a thing. Crouch, how do I... Shift. Now, keyboard struggles aside, we may be running the game at 2560 by 1600, but for CSGO at low settings, that is not a very good frame rate. And it feels quite input laggy. Also, the display isn't very good at motion rendering. You can see there's quite a bit of motion blur when you look around. Even for a 60 hertz panel, the motion rendering's pretty rough. So it may be quiet, but it's not running CSGO very well. Uh, let's quickly try some Dota. That's not a great start. I just clicked on settings and it seems like the game crashed. Oh, no, it just took super long. Never mind. Now, considering that we want to leave it at the native resolution, which is quite high, I am going to leave the uh, settings a bit lower. Ooh, despite the quite high frame rate, it still feels really input laggy and there's like a molasses -y feeling. I can still last hit, but it's against a bot and it just it doesn't feel very good. So let's plug an external display in and see if that fixes it. Whoa, even plugging an external monitor into it's kind of buggy. For some reason, initially when I plugged it in, it wouldn't give me 120 hertz refresh rate through the Acasis dongle, but then I plugged it into a different dongle, which gave me 120 hertz. And then when I switched back to the Acasis, it now also gives me 120 hertz out. So that's all weird. I don't know what the reason is for any of that. And then Dota also decided to get in on the weirdness. So I'm getting music through the MacBook but no video over there. And then on the display, I'm getting just the mouse. 
Okay, let me just unplug the display and then it breaks it there. Okay, so I've unplugged it from the other display, but now it looks like that. Okay, let me try plug the HDMI back in and then maybe that helps. I've found so far with this MacBook, I've had to do everything three times before anything's actually worked. So let's give it a try again. We've just gotten a mouse again. Okay, that's, that's very good. After that, I tried to see if CSGO is working. Hey, well CSGO works with an external monitor. Wow, that is a lot better. Now, it's quite unfair because this is a high refresh rate gaming monitor as opposed to the 60 hertz display in the MacBook. And it's a lower resolution, which means we get a higher frame rate, all of which will help the input lag. But still, it just it feels so much better. Go see if we can get Dota running. Yay, it's finally worked. The way I fixed it was by changing resolution from default for display to scaled back to default for display. And then it was fine. Yeah, it definitely feels a lot more responsive. It's not great, but it's definitely better than it was before. And one thing that I do really like about the little MacBook is it's been so quiet through all of this. I've basically not heard any fan noise from it, which is a huge improvement over any gaming laptop. Now, just to compare more directly, I did try playing Dota again on the MacBook display with a more comparable resolution. And yeah, it may be retina sharp and have beautiful colors, but wow, is it not good for gaming. Now, I also tried Dirt, but getting it to run on an external monitor was the most annoying of any of the games. When you launch the game, you have to do it without the external monitor plugged in, and then you have to go into the settings. Once you're there, you plug the monitor in, and then there's like a 30% chance that the settings won't lock off and force you to use some very low resolution default setting. But most of the time, the settings locks you out, so then you have to restart the whole process again and hope that this time the settings don't lock you out. And you have to to do this every time you want to play the game. So you have to decide, do you want to display struggle or use the monitor in the MacBook that has the motion rendering and input lag of a 90s plasma television? Now I'm just going to stop myself there because it goes on like that for a while. And at this point, we all know that gaming on a MacBook is like going to a buffet where most of your favorite food is just locked behind glass counters. And the little bit of food that you do have access to is several years old and just keeps glitching through your plate. But quite frankly, I don't mind that Apple treats non-mobile gaming like it's an STD they may catch if they're not careful, because I don't want Apple anywhere near the games industry. The one thing that Apple is good at above all else is finding a way to charge unbelievable amounts for things and then having people still buy them. So they're just gonna find a way to make gaming even more expensive. And it's not like game publishers need any help milking their customers dry, but <laughs> if Apple starts buying game publishers, we may get Apple exclusive games, which would mean we'd have to buy a $20,000 MacBook just to play League of Legends or whatever. Can you imagine what would happen if Apple buys a company like Nintendo? Hey, uh, I just want to buy one of those new Nintendo designed in California switches, please. The one that's made from brushed aluminium, so it's disgusting after the first time you've touched it. The base model for that is $2,000. Whoa, that is way too much money. Yeah, but remember, it smells neutral clean from the box. Yeah, I, I guess you gotta pay for that. That makes sense. Oh, by the way, the base model doesn't actually come with any storage in it, and you kind of need that for it to work. Uh, but luckily, we have new neural SSDs, and getting a 256 gig one only costs an extra $1,200. That is insane! I'm just gonna buy the base model and then I'll add my own storage. But you can't upgrade it yourself because it uses the new neural SSDs. It's just an OEM Samsung drive. I can see it from here. Yeah, but it's got neural in it. There is no way anybody's gonna pay that amount for it. Um, they all did. Do you know what? No, thank you. I don't want it anymore. Okay, well, I guess you're not going to be able to play the new Smash Bros, then. Look at all these awesome screenshots without any actual gameplay in it. Fine, let me call my bank. Oh yeah, did you want a charger with that? 